This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, the joy that I have, the world didn't give it, and the world surely can't take it away. Oh, good morning, St. Mark, to whom all blessings flow. We give him all the honor, the praise, and the glory. Oh, bless his holy name. Genesis chapter 26, verse 4 and 5. And it reads, I will make your descendants a numerous as the stars in the sky and will give them all these lands. And through your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed because Abraham obeyed me and kept my requirements my commands, my decrees, and my laws. And I would like to preach on the subject this morning, standing by faith in a different spot. Standing by faith in a different spot. Let's pray. Our gracious, our eternal God, whom the earth and the fullness thereof belongs and all that dwells within. My gracious God, I come to you this morning as humble as I can. First of all, to say, thank you, God, for waking me up this morning and waking me up in my right mind. And God, I just thank you for what you're doing in my life because you are the head of my life. And God, I just ask you to hide Reverend McCoy behind the cross and you come forward so that the people of God will see you and hear you, not me. And God, I just ask you right now to just purposely locate me to the yielding of your anointing at this time. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Standing by faith in a different spot. My beloved, this sermon focused on God, the coven, coven maker. From the beginning, God is revealed as a covenant maker and a promise keeper. Jeremiah 33 and 20 says, this is what the Lord says. If you can break my covenant with the day and my covenant with the night, so that day and night no longer come at their appointed time. My beloved, this word lifts up God's covenant with the day and covenant with the night. Thereby, the unchangeable character of God, natural, uh, is uh, emphasized as his relationship with all his creations. Those of you who are watching on Facebook and YouTube this morning, come with me if you would. The focus on a struggling saint by the name of Isaac, the recipient of a promise given to his father Abraham. My beloved, the promise of God to Abraham that he would be heir of the world in, uh, is repeated in his offspring, Isaac and Jacob, in succession. The story of Abraham is one of the most interesting illustration of a relationship between man and God. My beloved, when theologians search to demonstrate a perfect example of true faith, they look to talk about Abraham and Isaac in the region of Mount Moriah. They enjoy lifting up Abraham's willingness to lay his son Isaac on the altar. My beloved, as we consider Sarah giving birth to Isaac in her old age and Abraham's willingness to give up the blessing after waiting almost a lifetime to receive it, my beloved, there is tremendous support and reference for these two major attributes of God. Number one, it is never too late for God. Number two, there's nothing too hard for God. However now, Deacon Curtis, what is really important for you and important for I is to focus on the character of faith of a person who would move themselves in a position so that God can do the providing. My beloved, let's illustrate how God collect, uh, how to collect on the promises of God. And this brings me to the first point of the tech, Apostle, uh, obedience. Faith is the principle 
uh, by which we are saved and obedience is the facilitator of our spiritual growth. Listen from the New King James Version, if you would. Genesis 26 and 2 says, Then the Lord appeared to him and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land of which I shall tell you. Notice now, if you would, verse 2 begins with then. My beloved, can I put my teaching hat on for a moment? Then is an adverb. From basic English, we know that an adverb is a class of words that is used to modify a verb or an adjective. To modify is to change slightly in character. So then, from our text, what needs to be changed, the change occurs as we transition from verse 1 to 2. Located in verse 1 is an adjective that needs modifying. Well, there was a famine in the land. Famine is the objective describing the condition of the land. My beloved, in a word, there was an acute food shortage, hunger at the point of starvation. Verse 1 says, Isaac went to the king. It is reasonable to conclude that the king shared with Isaac that food was in Egypt. Now, after gathering that information and plans to go, then, uh-oh, there is an uh, adverb again, then, then the Lord showed up in verse number two and said, do not go to Egypt, but live in the land in which I shall tell you. Now, if you look at verse three, God tell Isaac where the land is. Where is the land? Genesis 26 and 3 says, stay in this land for a while and I will be with you and will bless you for to you and your descendants, I will give all these lands and will confirm the oath I swore to your father, Abraham. My beloved, the land the Lord gave him was where he was. <laughs> the land was plagued with hunger. Consequently, now, Deke, as it was faith, faced with a theological dilemma, in essence, my beloved, the Lord said to Isaac, yes, there is food in Egypt. <laughs> However, now, that is not where I want you to be. Yes, food is in Egypt, but your blessing is where you are. Now, the B part of the verse 3 is saying, if you are obedient, then I will bless you and your descendants. My love, if you would, keep reading that third verse. Not only will I bless you of your obedience, but you can also collect on the promises I made to your father. My love, go with me to verse 5 if you would. God said, the reason your father is so special is because he obeyed my voice and kept my charge. Are you obeying God's voice today? Seriously, are you keeping his charge today? Listen to what verse 5 says, Deacon Curtis. Because Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws, you see, it's right there in the text. If, it's, if you don't see it, it's because you tore it out. My beloved, <laughs> there will come a time when you will have to make a decision between the natural and the supernatural. Decision time, choices. Now, the suggestion here, my beloved, is that much of the chaos in our lives is a result of bad choices. We must understand that our lives can, cannot be no better than the choices we make. Isaac was mixed with fear and faith. Nevertheless, <laughs> he had to make a decision between the natural and the supernatural. My beloved, in a word now, Isaac had to settle the bread issue. <laughs> 
Many bad choices are made. Some, so many promises are made to God and broken because the bread issue is not settled. Now, I know you be, may be saying, Reverend McCoy, what do you mean by the bread issue? And I'm glad you asked. <laughs> the word of God said, man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. My beloved, Genesis 26 and 6 says, so Isaac dwelt in uh, Gerar. So Isaac dwelt there where God instructed him to. In a famine land, a desert, where death was a threat. Oh, can I tell you something this morning? To collect on the promises of God, obedient must be a must. God never blesses disobedience. There must be order. He never blesses a mess. And this country is in a mess right now. Look at the White House. It's a real mess. Well, not the White House itself, but those that, that, that's in the White House. It's a mess. And only God can clean it up. My beloved, as a believer, you are about the business of faith in action. Paul says, in Acts 27 and 25, from a shipwrecked position, I believe God. It is possible that the greatest fighting ground between success and failure may be the dry desert of your faith. Your business is not with developing a blessing plan. Your business is not with handling your enemies. Your business is having faith in the word of God. Oh, my beloved, that is simple and plain enough. God's word is stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Oh, this battle is not yours to fight. It's of the Lord's. Faith is the key. Deacon Curtis, I have discovered that it is faith that moves God. <laughs> well, this brings me to the second point of the text this morning. Don't stop digging your wells. Obedience and don't stop digging your wells. My beloved, look at verse 12 if you could. Genesis 26 and 12 says, Then Isaac sold in that land and reaped the same year a hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. <laughs> My beloved, obedience is the key to this verse. Isaac had a choice to go to Egypt where food was plenty or so in a desert land. In a land that was in the midst of a drought and none productivity. But based on God's promises, Apostle Isaac obeyed. Let me tell you something this morning. Every person, every person that's watching me right now, you have a choice. Isaac, in essence, was a prime example of Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. And it says, trust in the Lord <laughs> with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. My beloved, we all are the products of the choices we make. Isaac had to make a different choice. Oh, the suggestion here is that difficulties may be opportunities for spiritual growth and prosperity. If it's under God's control through our faith, I have discovered that no one can make a failure out of you but you. We must understand that faith courage is the ability to trust when the mission seems impossible. Difficulties are opportunities 
for growth. If you try to avoid all trials, you are simply arresting your development and delaying your blessings. The Bible said, as it sold in that land, as a result of faith sowing, he began to prosper. My beloved, can I give you a sub point <laughs> to the second point? And it has to do with envy. Keep in mind now, there is a major difference between envy and jealousy. And they are identical twins and the first cousin of covetous. When one is jealous, they simply wish they had what you have. However, when one is envious, they don't not only want what you have, but they don't want you to have it. Look at Genesis 26 and 14. He said, so many, he, he, he had so many flocks and herds and servants that the Philistines envied him. Why, Deacon Curtis, did they envy him? Oh, I ain't going to tell you until you say, uh, why? why? I'm glad you asked me. Because of Isaac's faithfulness, God blessed him. On the other hand, the disobedient ones were upset with his obedience. Faithlessness was angry with faithfulness. Oh, my beloved, in a word, as it is a target for frustration. You see, the problem with envy is that many times people will hurt themselves trying to hurt you. Look at verse 15. It says, so all the wells that his father's servants had dug in the time of his father Abraham, the Philistines stopped up. Filling them with the earth. Dirt. <laughs> they stopped up the wells. Think about it, my beloved, for a moment. Why would you stop up wells in a desert and you need water too? I don't understand that. <laughs> it's right there in verse 15. Isaac's prosperity angered his enemies. And their response was to stop up all the wells. Now, come with me and consider Isaac's response in verse 17. It says, so Isaac moved away from there and escaped and encamped in the valley and settled there. Isaac departed and pitched his tent in the valley and dug another well. Oh, the suggestion here is when you are directed by God, you can have peace in the valley. Notice now, if you would, the scripture said he pitched his tent. My beloved, we must understand that the valley times is a temporary time. And I am convinced that the length of time we spend in the valley is determined by the attitudes and lessons we learn. Now, Deacon Curtis, in a addition, I believe that valley times is necessary for at least three reasons. Number one, we are taught on the mountain, but tested in the valley. Oh, we learn the value of prayer and how to pray in the valley. And thirdly, our testimonies and helping ministries are developed in the valley. So now, as it pits his tent in the valley. Look at his attitude, if you would. It did not change. Verse 17 says he set up a temporary house in the valley, but he did not throw a pity party. <laughs> Instead, verse 18 says he dug more wells and found water. It seems to me, Deacon Curtis, that because of Isaac's willingness to obey the Lord, his footsteps was ordered and he was led by the supernatural power. Isaac was uh, available to find water where water could not be found. Oh, he found water in the desert. He found water in the valley. Now, those of you who have never been in the valley, I would say, Alley. Just drop the V in his alley. Oh, my beloved, please understand that the anointed, the unanointed watched the anointed. 
And they waited until they see the results of your faith. Then they want to claim and quarrel now that the wells are dug in your life. Uh, people on the outside are quarreling. Uh, have you, Deacon Curtis, have you heard the conversation of the enemy? Even if the enemy were to take the well, they cannot take your anointing. Keep on digging. We must understand that you cannot collect on the promise if you stop digging. Yes, there are some who don't mind digging if they can control your well. Some don't mind Reverend McCoy serving as pastor of St. Mark as long as they can control his well. My beloved, Satan don't mind you shouting if he can control your stewardship and ministry well. Well, my beloved, this brings me to the third and final point of the text. How to dig your wells. Uh, my beloved, how do you dig new wells? Oh, I'm so glad you asked me, Deacon Curtis, because I'm willing to tell you how to keep digging new wells. You must recognize that kingdom well digging requires your highest commitment and be ready to forsake any moment that hinders you. Remember, your heart follows your treasure. Put your treasure where you want your life to be. Avoid misplacing your affection and loyalty because of personal possessions. And finally, get rid of distractions. Then expect and welcome the refining work of the Holy Spirit. Most importantly, avoid traditional well digging. My beloved, the entire method must undergird by a, a commitment to God and a recognition of the fact that faith is a decision and obedience rather than an ability. Furthermore, that uh, uh, obedient faith release Holy Ghost power and accomplish the task. What is well digging? Well digging is investing in the word of God. Well digging is releasing faith through action. The word of God contains such tremendous promise and provisions. However, my beloved, so many Christians live as spiritual pompers because they fail to collect on the promise. They, there are so many promises that go unclaimed. There are so many promises and benefits that go unnoticed. There are so many blessings that go unreceived. There are so many privileges that go unknowledged. Well, now the question comes, why? Because so many believers give up in the middle of the storm and stop digging wells. I want to say to you this morning, no matter how dark the way it gets, never stop digging your wells. As you dig wells, you are collecting on the promise. Oh, I'm standing on the promises of Christ my Savior. I'm standing on the promises of God, my Lord. <laughs> Far too many call themselves believers have stopped digging wells. And as a result, the church is powerless. As a result, the church is joyless, hopeless, restless, useless, and even perhaps huh, hopeless. Oh, I have decided to keep on digging wells and collecting on the promises. Well, now, my beloved, I got to get out of here now. But uh, you got to keep on digging. <laughs> I came to tell somebody this morning, keep digging. It's digging time. Uh, don't worry about what happened yesterday. Keep digging. Oh, if you're not too mean or too low down and dirty, get your spiritual shovel out and start digging. I said start digging. 
If you're ready for God to fulfill your will, get out your spiritual shovel and dig and dig and dig. No matter what happened in your life, you can dig again. Oh, you ain't ready. You ain't ready. But if you have cancer, dig. If you have hard trouble, dig. If you have financial trouble, dig. Oh, if you got uh, uh, trouble on your mind, dig. If you're still worrying about this COVID-19, dig. Oh, because your breakthrough is in the well. You got to dig. Don't stop digging. Don't stop digging. I tell you, your blessing is in the well. Dig. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. It's in the well. Dig. Dig, 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 dig your well. God bless you. God bless you today. If there's one today who don't know Jesus Christ as your personal savior and you don't know how to dig, all you got to do is turn to Romans. <laughs> and it'll tell you in Romans 10, 9, it says, if thou confess with thy mouth, and believe in their heart that Jesus died and he arose, then the Bible says you shall be saved. God bless God you. God loves the cheerful giver. As stated in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7, if this church has been a blessing to you and God has placed in your heart a desire to give, here are a few different ways for you to do so. First, you can go to the church website at sightmarkbaptist.org, click on the donations tab at the top, and follow the prompts. You will be directed to our donations page, which will give you the options to donate by debit card or PayPal account. Secondly, you can visit us in person at 4118 State Highway 34 East. That's Ridgeway, South Carolina. Someone will be available Tuesday through Fridays from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Due to COVID-19, we are practicing all social distancing guidelines, which includes the wearing of masks and other face coverings. Please abide by these guidelines along with us. Thirdly, you may mail your offering in to the church. Address it to St. Mark Baptist Church, 4118 State Highway 34 East. That's Ridgeway, South Carolina, 29130. Thank you in advance for your support of St. Mark Baptist Church. God bless. <music>